Well, we're glad that you're with us today, and you know it's raining, it's actually kind of warm out, and if I seem a little, you know, I'm a pretty laid back person, but if I seem a little nervous today, I'm, I'm uh, Alexis was due four days ago, and she still is way overdue, and I'm like, you know, I'm like, I don't, would you just have that baby, get it out of there, and just, I just can't concentrate, I don't know what it is, I just can't. Ah, anyway, so hopefully, hopefully today, maybe, but uh, anyways, you know, I've enjoyed studying uh, the series on, uh, you know, that we have hope, knowing that that revelation brings hope in our life, and how that today we're going to look at the Holy Spirit in in the last days, and even see where uh, the United States is in in the midst of all this, and uh, how we come into play uh, in these last days. So let's pray. Father, we thank you today, Lord, that we can worship with all that's gone on in the world. We're here today, and we're just so grateful that, Lord, think back a year ago, and everything was so, even though it was uncertain now, we just didn't know at all what was taking place. So Father, we're thankful we can meet today going to worship, whether it's online or here, and Lord, just may we look to your word to give us encouragement and hope, in Jesus' name, amen. You know, it's interesting when it talks about uh, the last days, it always ends with comfort one another with these words. And so, when you and I are, are looking at what's going on today, in these last days, you know, the Lord says something so important. He's, he's always saying to remember, and uh, like to remember to turn your phone off. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, I don't know where it is, but it's, I hear it somewhere. It's still going, all right. Anyway, so. <laughs> Turn to 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and we're going to look at, uh, at verse 5. The apostle is, is telling him something very important about the last days and about the Holy Spirit. He says these words, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things. And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. That's important, let me read it again. And now you know what is restraining. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who is now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. So the Lord tells us something very important here. What is keeping back, think about this for me because we don't talk about it enough. Even though we talk about the Holy Spirit here at City Church, a lot of churches don't, don't talk a lot about the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit dwells within you and within me. And you are actually the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, that being said, so the Holy Spirit protects you, convicts us, watches over us. And at the same time, the Holy Spirit is restraining everything that is going on that's wrong today. We, we, we see all the madness that's taking place, here, but still... We are, we are pushing back. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the restrainer. That's what it's talking about there. One day when the rapture takes place, it says the Holy Spirit will be taken out of the way because we will be taken up in the rapture. Now, the reason I'm talking about this today is so many people have been asking me lately about, you know, what's going on and everything with the pandemic and the last days and all these different things. So I want to share something that was important. It was in the news just uh, this week. If you saw that uh, the United States got it wrong, but Israel got it right, and that is uh, Iran, within the next year and a half, will actually have a nuclear weapon. Now, they've lied this whole time. They've continued to work on uh, all their nuclear arms and so forth. Now, what have they said repeatedly over and over and over again? They're going to wipe Israel off the map. Destroy it. 
regardless. And they said, if, if they try which Israel, hey, we know that Israel was the very first spies that ever existed that went into the promised land and they've been spying on people ever since then, that they are knowing without a doubt what has taken place here. So we need to keep watching it and knowing that in the next year and a half, what's going to happen? You know, what's going to take place and how that we need to be watching that because Israel will not let them get that far. They will make a strike before then. And so we need to be careful to understand that the Bible is telling us that we are in those days. We're in the, the, we're in the days that we need to be watching. Now, what does the Lord say? So many people are so discouraged now, aren't they? You just, you see that with so many people. Well, God's word tells us to look up. Look up for your redemption draws close. What does that mean? You know, I want you to know that one day, especially as we get older, you know how your bodies start to not work like they used to. And one day the Bible tells us that we will be redeemed. So I want to encourage you today to, to know that you and I have hope and know that we have the Holy Spirit that's directing us. You know, I've been reading a lot about uh, the school system lately and the, and the teachers and so forth across the United States. And uh, the, the difficulty is in, in, in all that they're having to go through to teach and be connected with, with their students and so forth. I want you to know that you and I are, are connected all the time with the Holy Spirit. And he's going to lead us and he's going to guide us until he's taken out of the way. Now, is the United States in the Bible? I get that question all the time. Now, I studied this a lot and a lot of different theologians, and I really believe that there's one place in Ezekiel that talks about uh, there's going to be a, a, a great war. Now, not the, not the war of Armageddon, but the war of Gog and Magog. That's Russia. All right, now, what I want you to get with this is knowing that in Ezekiel 38 it says there's going to be several nations that are going to back Israel and at the same time there's going to be several nations that are going to come against Israel and this is where we're heading many believe what I just said a minute ago that the precursor or the kickoff to that could be when Israel strikes into Iran could start this war where Russia will come in Turkey will come in, Iran will come in, and they will come against Israel. When that happens, the Bible says there'll be several nations that will come and stand with Israel, but it won't be enough. But it says in Ezekiel 38, it says, the merchants of Tarshish and their young lions. The merchants of Tarshish is England. And England's offspring, their young lions, is the United States. So, studying that, knowing that, that we're going to come and in some ways try and, and help Israel, but it won't, won't be enough. And that's where God comes through. Now, I'm going to stop for just a minute and knowing why, why won't that be enough? Why isn't the United States, why aren't we in the, in the, in the Bible more? I believe that, that when the rapture takes place, according to... I believe it's Barner Research, that a third of Americans are evangelical Christians. When the rapture takes place, that means a third, uh, that, that, that's if we have 330 million people, 100 million people will be taken up in the rapture. The United States will be more affected than any other nation. Hardly will affect China. It won't affect Russia that much. There will still be people all over the world that will be raptured. But at the same time, knowing that that is the difference, it's going to decimate the United States. And that's why we probably don't see really any other place in there. But to know that God is going to come in at that time. And he's going to come in and he's going to protect the nation of Israel. The Bible says there's going to be a great earthquake. And there's going to rain it. Uh, hailstones and fire and he's going to consume all those armies now this is where we get to where we're at today and we're going to look at it personally what happens then is this everybody gets 
sick of war. It says they're going to bury the, the, uh, the soldiers. Will, it'll take them seven months to bury all the soldiers. Seven months. Now, so at that time, after all that, and there's every, all the nations are sick of war, that's where the Antichrist will come upon the scene. And so to watch in history now, to know that watch for what, and I'm trying to share with you so you can know where we're at in in this world and to keep watching what's taking place because we are so close. Wouldn't it make a difference if, if, even in my preaching, what I'm saying, if I knew that today was was the last Sunday that I was ever going to preach and the Lord was going to take us out of here? How would we live different? I want you and I to know that we are so close and to know that we need to look up and be so thankful that we have hope. You have hope today. And all that we see and everything that's going on, we don't know what we're going to hear in the news tomorrow. But what does the Bible tell you? We're going to close with this in in, uh, John chapter 14, verses 26 and 27. John chapter 14, verse 26 and 27. Again, reminding you about the Holy Spirit now and in these last days. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all the things I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give, let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. You know, you talk to the same people that, that I do, and everybody is concerned financially and for their jobs now and everything is taken. But what's going what's to happen this week? What's going to happen tomorrow? I, I don't know. But I, I know that the Lord had you here today to know, to hear this message or the, if you're watching to know, to remind you, and to remind me that the Holy Spirit that dwells within us, no matter what news that you hear this week, will give you one wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, if you ask for it. What does the Bible say? The devil gives us what? Or wants to fear. The spirit of fear. That's demonic. But God says, I want you to be encouraged because you have hope. So I want you and I to know today, as this world continues, because it it just seems like everything just continues on what's happening, to know that you and I, if we need discernment and what to do with our jobs or how to act with our families, the Lord says, all you have to do is ask me and I will show you what to do next. And secondly, he says, I will comfort you. The helper comes alongside and comes in our heart when we accept Jesus as our savior. And he encourages us to the place that it comforts in a place in such a way that in your life and in my life, to know that God is always going to come through. Now, I don't know how, I don't know what, but I know that God knows exactly what you're facing and what you're going through. And the Holy Spirit, as we see what's happening in the world today, we can have discernment. We don't have to live like the world. We have hope. We, we, know, we know what's happening. See, God always reveals to his people, to us, when we can see the future because we have his word. Know that you are living and can live differently than everybody that's around you or around me. No matter what your job is, no matter what your place is, no matter what your stature is in life or at work, We can live with joy and with hope. That's what God's word tells us. Let me read that last part again, and we'll close. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You don't have to fear today. I want you to know that you have hope. I want you to know as we see... No matter what we see happen this week, no matter what you hear with a phone call, no matter what you're going to have to make decisions with, to know that you have hope and you can see what's taking place in the world today.
The Holy Spirit directs you and guides you. And in these last days, listen, we're living in a time that the Lord could come back at any point in time. I believe is what other uh, theologians believe is that the Antichrist is already alive today and walking somewhere on, the, in the, on this earth. He's just not been revealed yet. And we won't know. We'll be out of here. But just to know this is where we're at. How it acts and, and can help us and encourage us to live in such a different way that we can look up and to know that God is going to come and we're going to be redeemed and we won't ever have to put up with all the things that we go through in this life and we have that to hope for and at the same time as you and I live in this life you and I will always have hope we'll always know what to do or if we don't know what to do the Lord will give us the peace in the process in the meantime peace I leave with you not as the world gives give I unto you let not your heart be troubled and neither let it be afraid today Let's pray. So our heads are bowed today. You know, what, what, are, you, what are you facing? What are you, what, are you, what, what, are you, what are you going through right now? What, what pops right into your mind right now? I want you to know that if you're watching today or you're here, you have hope. If you know Jesus is your Savior. You have hope. And more than anything else, if you were just here to be reminded, no matter if it's a death or if it's a divorce or if it's something that you're in your job situation or something that, that you're just afraid about, you can go to Jesus and know with the Holy Spirit that you and I have hope today. If you're watching and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, the Bible tells us, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. With the heart we believe, with the mouth we confess. So if you're, you're watching today, and as we have so many more every week, watch it. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I believe who you are, that you're the Son of God, and that you died on the cross for me. And you shed your blood for me. And I ask you to come into my heart, to forgive me for all of my sins. And from this day forward, help me to live by your resurrection power. Father, we thank you today that we, we have hope. Lord, we see our world in wars and rumors of wars and all the different things. But Father, you've reminded us today in your word to the Holy Spirit that Jesus, no matter what we see or hear, we can be calm. We can have peace because you're directing our life. You're showing us every step of the way. You give us the spirit of wisdom. We don't have to fear. Father, we thank you today that we can always walk with you and the Holy Spirit within our life can give us comfort no matter what we go through. Thank you, Jesus. If there's someone here today that doesn't know you as Ben leads us today, may they come forward and I can pray with them and they can accept you into their heart. In Jesus' name.